Good afternoon. Welcome to the Thursday afternoon Bible study. I'm your host and Bible teacher, Bob Bear. And today, we're on lesson three, part five, C. <laughs> We're going to be studying about Abraham and Lot today. Lot was Abraham's nephew who left Ur the Chaldees with him and Sarai and his father Terah. Just getting chat up on my phone. Sometimes it, I have to restart my phone for the Twitch app to work. It was working earlier. Then it decided to go on me. All right, we got it now. Yes, so again, good afternoon. We'll be in the book of Genesis today. We're using the New King James Version. Let's see. Oh, what's in 12? What happens to 12? Promises to Abraham. Oh, we didn't do Egypt yet. We got the promises of Abraham, but we didn't look at Egypt yet. This is a good story. So, we're going to look at that as well. I, I just need to get the screen ready. I think 90 percent's good. Move these over. Yep. 90 percent's good. I hope you're having a good day. Yep. Looks alright. Can I do that? Can I make this smaller too? Oh, I can. Oh, that's good. It says live and unstable. Oh, good. Thank you, Twitch. <laughs> I'm being labeled already. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> it's bit rate and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm a bit... Mm, today, because yesterday... Yesterday morning, I whew, I get a double vaccination of flu and shingles, and uh, oh man, that hits like a truck. Last year I had it the same arm. This year I had one in each arm. So, that's not bad. It's just a little sensitive to the touch. But, uh, man, you do experience, or at least I do, um, flu-like symptoms. It's not COVID or nothing. Just my body uh, creating antibodies and reacting to the 
introduction of the virus so that if I do you know it's, it's supposed to be like dead cells of the virus so if I I come in contact with the real thing this is my understanding of vaccination then I will already have antibodies in place that will help me fight off the disease that's my understanding I could be mistaken but anyway do 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 so that was a text saying that tools and cleanup items were at the church in Fenton. Nice, because we're doing work there. Um, we haven't been approved yet. And we're not paying rent yet. But the landlord, he wants our church in his building. And he said, hey, no more services in the park. Come. You have Bible study in the building. And on top of that, we wanted to pay half for the carpet. And he wants to remove the drop ceiling. It's UPS. So God is, God is doing great things for our church in Fenton, Michigan. It's very exciting. All right. I think I'm coming around now. Oh yeah. So I didn't, I didn't get to sleep till after three this morning because of the pain that was racking my body. Ooh, man. Hmm. I think it was after three 30 actually. So I've been, I've been resting, 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 resting. And I just, I just got, I just got up, out of bed, turn my computer on, get ready for the Bible study. All right, let's pray. We pray for the Bible study. We pray for those who come to the Bible study and we pray for Twitch. Because like our church's landlord in Fenton, all right, you guys. I gotta, I gotta silence my phone. One second. Twitch is uh, well, like our landlord here in cyberspace. You see. So naturally, we're gonna pray for Twitch. Uh, as well as as well as the Bible study me and all of you who come here to learn Lord Jesus we pray to bless this time together that we will be studying your word pray God that your spirit have its way among us we pray for wisdom enlightenment and understanding that the darkness of confusion would be removed from our lives and replaced by the glorious light of your knowledge and truth. Let every lie be exposed for what it is and let the darkness be reproved by your word. Father, we pray that you help me to speak as your oracle, to teach and to give sense and understanding of your word, and make wise the simple. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Forgive us our sins, Lord, sins of omission and sins of commission.
pray that you bless all those who come here to study your word today with peace, comfort, encouragement, conviction of sin. By your grace, grant repentance. And we pray, Father, that all be edified and renewed by the washing of the water of your word. We pray to bless Twitch for giving us this time to study your word together here in cyberspace, which would be otherwise impossible for us to meet all at one time on such short notice from all different parts of the world. We're grateful to you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now. Do 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 do. I am really grateful to Mr. Epod for all his hard work in helping us with this Bible study. I mean, um, helping this channel, especially the Bible study, which you see is the result of his work. That's, that's why this channel looks so good now. It's because of Mr. Apod. So much appreciated. <clears throat> this is a home Bible study series called Search for Truth 2. It's the revised edition of Search for Truth, which I studied when I was a new convert on the ship in the Navy, as was taught by one of the brothers. Search the scriptures, said Jesus. They are they which testify of me. So, whether it's New Testament or Old, scriptures all point to Jesus because it's all ultimately it's all about God and what he's doing in this world so Abraham came from Ur the Chaldees which was uh, north of the Persian Gulf near the where the Tigris and Euphrates meet and God said come out to a land that I will show you and I'll give it to you and your descendants forever and he was told to leave all his family and everything behind. But he took his wife, his nephew, and his father. I believe it was uh, probably got about this far. Stayed in a city for a little while until his father died. And then he continued his journey into the land of Canaan. It's called Canaan because that area was settled by sons of Ham, one of his sons' name was Canaan. Uh, Abraham was descended from Shem. These are Ham, Shem, and Japheth were sons of Noah. And from Noah's three sons are all the uh, tribes and nations and tongues descended. The tongues got confused at the Tower of Babel, which caused the dispersion of the human race. Because before it, they were just staying in one place. And that did not please God because he told them to multiply and fill the earth. And they weren't doing that. So he changed their languages to encourage them to do that. Hello. Hello, somebody else just woke up too. So Abraham left Ur the Chaldees, traveled to the land of Canaan, one of Ham's descendants. Okay. 
it was uh there that um Abraham got circumcised and all the Hebrews from then on including um, servants any males that were born in a Hebrew home or were uh, bought yep bought because slavery was a thing back then anybody who was in their home was circumcised and God made a covenant with Abraham and a covenant is a special bargain a special deal which cannot be revoked annulled or broken unless both parties agree unlike a divorce or marriage which nowadays gets broken all the time just because one or both people are tired of looking at each other <clears throat> but anyway that's neither here nor there isn't it and through this covenant, God blessed Abraham, told him that his posterity or his descendants would number as be like the stars of heaven. He would inherit the land of Canaan, or his descendants would, and that a, a spiritual seed through him, and that would be Jesus, through that seed all the nations of the earth would be blessed, and we know that's because salvation came through to the Jew first and then to the Gentile and that uh, that's how Abraham became the father of the faithful and it's through faith that we too as Gentiles become heirs of the promise thanks to Jesus because Abraham showed us uh, that faith is essential to be counted for righteousness. And in water baptism, that is the new circumcision, not of the flesh, but a circumcision of the heart, a spiritual circumcision. Now, let's look before. All right, so we mentioned that uh, Lot had followed his uncle into the uh, land of Canaan, and God had blessed them both. Financial prosperity was one of the promises that God gave to Abraham. Okay. Uh, but before they had become so rich and separated there was a famine in the land in Genesis copy chapter 12 I'll put that in the chat for you so you can follow along there was a famine in the land that's that would be the land of Canaan and Abram this is before God changed his name to Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there for this famine was severe in the land and it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt he said to Sarai his wife indeed I know that you are a woman of beautiful continence therefore what will happen when the Egyptians see you they will say this is his wife and they will kill me but they will let you live Please say you are my sister, and it may be well with me for your sake that I may live because of you. Wow. I this this story is so interesting. Um and I 
And I think what makes it so interesting is that Abraham, who's called the father of the faithful, is still learning how to walk by faith. He's still learning what it means to walk by faith and to trust God for not just providence or direction, but for protection too. Now, Sarai wasn't just his wife. Uh, she was his half-sister. They had the same father, but not the same mother. And you think, ew, that's gross, that's gross, ew. Well, uh, back in this time, you didn't have as many genetic defects prevalent in the human race. Okay? And so there was less chance of uh, birth defects and such. Um, back in Adam's time, people were still um, marrying their brothers and sisters because there was no one else. And it wasn't until, oh man, Well, even uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, married his own first cousin, Eleanor Roosevelt. And the royal families of Europe. You know? Also married close kin. There's only recently, as far as human history goes, that there is a stigma attached to marrying a relative, let alone a close relative. All right. But the point is here that he's trying to protect himself and I did not see where God had told him, Abraham, go to Egypt. Doesn't say that. So we see Abram uh, trying to do things on his own. Here he is, the father of the faithful. And we can watch and observe and learn and make application lessons as, as we see Abram grow in his own faith. We can make application to our lives and see how we try doing things on our own as well in place of trusting God. And we can see how they backfired for Abram, or nearly backfired. And we can we can make the correlation to our life. So there's a famine in the land came to pass, he told his wife, which was also his half sister, uh Please say that you are my sister, so they won't kill me. Sarai must have been, wow, like Miss Universe. So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. The princes of Egypt also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. Like, wow, Pharaoh, you've got to see this woman. She's gorgeous. Oh, we'll bring her here. 
Yeah, she's the sister of Abram. Oh, sister, not wife? Excellent. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. Oh. <laughs> oh. Abram benefited from the deception. He didn't just survive. He benefited from the deception. So Pharaoh gave him sheep, oxen, donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. In other words, um, Pharaoh gave to Abram the equivalent of a handsome dowry. It seemed to me from these signs that Pharaoh had every intention of marrying Sarai. And he seems to be conducting himself in a most honorable way. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Adam's wife, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you've done to me? Why did you not tell me she was your wife? Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why did you, why did you say... She is my sister. I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. In another instance similar to this later in Abram's wife, uh, life, a similar thing happened with another king, Abimelech. And Abimelech, God had spoken to in a dream, said, I'm going to kill you. He said, why? What I do? You've taken my servant's wife, Abram. He's a prophet. He said, wait a second. I didn't know that. He said she was his sister. He said, that's basically, he said, that's why I'm going to spare you. So I think it's my opinion. It's possible that uh, a similar uh, thing happened with Pharaoh. Which is why. He allowed Abram to keep all the camels, the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, and the servants. It is also my opinion that this is where Hagar was introduced to Abram's household and became a servant to Sarai. We'll hear more about Hagar later. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife. You see, even though Abram tried to do this on his own, you know, provide for his household, and uh, instead of trusting God, God, in his mercy and his grace, still watched out for and protected Abraham, or Abram. His name is changed later. So pardon me if I keep switching between Abram and Abraham. God sometimes winks at our ignorance. Again, like I said, I believe Abraham, or Abram, 
was still learning to walk by faith. And Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all he had, and Lot with him, to the south. They mean to the south of Canaan. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his way from the south, as far as Bethel, to the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. I'm reminded of something that Jesus told one of the churches in the book of Revelation. Let's look at that. The New Testament. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. It's either in two or three. Ah, uh, yeah, here it is. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write. These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. That's Jesus. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Or else I will come quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. I, I cannot help but believe that Abraham experienced some repentance for his deception of Pharaoh. I imagine that he had experienced some guilt for the lie that he perpetrated because that lie made him very rich. And I think that's why he went back to that first altar to make atonement. When we, when we fail to do what's right, the way that we as believers deal with guilt and shame is that we take it to the cross and we give it to Jesus. We repent. And we ask God for his forgiveness. Proverbs says that if a righteous man falls seven times, he gets up again. Let's see, where is that? 2416, I want to look at that. Here it is. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. I believe that this isn't just failing in real life stuff like losing your job and finding courage in Jesus through your faith in God. 
whereas the wicked don't have that source of strength and peace to overcome adversity. But I believe this also means when we fall to sin, when we fall to temptation. Um, let's see, it says in Romans, says, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, oh, it's First John, I'm sorry, First John 1, 9. Here it is. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If Abram would have thought, oh, wow, I made it out good without acknowledging his sin for lying to Pharaoh then the truth would not have been in him however it says if we confess our sins God Jesus is faithful and just or justified to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's see. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So it's important. It's an important step in recovery from when we fall to temptation to admit our sins to God and repent so that he may lift us up off the ground. Okay. And this seven is, I believe, is a representative number, not a literal number. Seven typically is a number that represents uh, completion. So, as often as the righteous man falls, he keeps getting up. Because he believes that God will forgive him. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, I think, oh, there we go. All right. So Abraham, as soon as he left Egypt, went to that first altar that he had built to the Lord and offered a sacrifice. And I believe that was out of repentance that he called on the name of the Lord and it says Lot also who went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So, because of God's covenant with Abraham, Abram, they both prospered abundantly prosper
because of Lot's association with his uncle. Can there be too much of a good thing? It seems so. <laughs> it does. It seems so. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. We're relatives. We're family. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. So it's time for Abraham and Lot, Abram and Lot, to part ways because they're both getting too big, their possessions. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plains of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere. This is before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt as you go towards Zoar. So this, this area, these plains, were so lush and abundant resources. It was like the Garden of Eden. How do you pass that up? Well, apparently, it was too much for Lot to pass up because that's the path he chose. Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. They separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. So, Ab uh, Abram gave the choice, kind of like casting lots. <laughs> gave the choice to lot, like casting lots, you know, like like dice. Gave the choice to his nephew, because he knew God was going to prosper him wherever he went. And Lot chose what looked best from where he was standing at the time he did not seek God's direction he went with what felt right what looked best for him not best for his family not what was best for his uncle who was a blessing to him in all things but rather he made a selfish choice. Oh, I'm going to take the best land. See ya, uncle. And he pitched his tents near the city of Sodom, which was a wicked place. But let's see what, what happens with, with Abram. After Lot goes to the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that if a man could number the dust of the earth then your descendants also could be numbered arise walk in the land through its length and its width for I will give it to you 
you see, Abraham's trust in God was rewarded, even though Lot took the best land. God told him, it's all going to be yours in the end. Anyways, everything that you see, everywhere you walk, I'm going to give it to you and your descendants. Then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Lot did not build an altar. After this new promise that God gives to Abram, Abram builds an altar. He keeps God first. And that's what we need to do as we move through each phase of our life is to remember to be thankful to God and keep seeking his direction and his blessing in our life. We get a new job and we're being prospered. Sometimes we forget to be thankful and grateful. Um, I just got a nice nice little raise. Um, I need to be thankful and grateful and acknowledge that it's a blessing from God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that blessing, that increase in that blessing to my finance. Thank you, Lord. That's God's provision. I've not been lacking days to work. I've had to turn down days to work for one reason or another. You know, uh, God is, is blessing and prospering. If I forget to be grateful, um, not only may I lose that blessing, or I may not, depending on God's grace, but to be ungrateful is a great sin against God and others. We must be grateful. We must be thankful. The Bible says in all things, give thanks unto the Lord for this is the will of God uh, for you, concerning you, something like that. Why don't we look at it? And this, this is a good spot to end our Bible study. Give thanks to God in all things. In all things, give thanks to God. That's in... 1 Thessalonians 5. Oh, I haven't been in that book in a while. Five what? 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Quench not the spirit, despise, do not despise prophecies. Test all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from every evil. So in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Be thankful. Be thankful. Do not render evil for evil. Pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. That's what that's what we see Abraham doing. Abram. That's what we see Abram doing. And what we read here. And how he gave the choice of where to go to his nephew Lot. And he went the other direction. Amen.
All right. So this is the part of the Bible study where uh, we go to prayer. We go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a prayer request, you can type it in the chat. You can post it in the Discord. I'm not in Discord right now. I haven't looked at it since yesterday or the day before. But this is the time when we give thanks to God and we pray for each other or for our friends, our loved ones, or those whom we know just need prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time of study that we had. Pray that all those who uh, watch the rebroadcast of this or the recording, and those that were here uh, to study with us live, that they would be blessed, that they would be strengthened in their faith. Give to us, Lord, a grateful heart, a thankful heart. So that we might not sin against you and acknowledge that all give all good gifts descend from the Father of lights. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to bless Lucky and his family. Bless Willie and his family. We pray, Lord, for their healing. We pray for Burns Wheels, that you continue to heal his wound from the inside out, a proper, a good, whole healing. We pray that you bless Mr. Apod and Maddie. God, let your hand be upon them and keep them. Give them wisdom. We pray for the faith and salvation of all. Come here, we pray that you shield them from the pestilence that's out there. We pray, Lord, for a quick end to this pandemic. Pray to comfort those who have lost friends or loved ones or in fear for their lives comfort and give them peace thank you Jesus Amen God bless you all I look forward to seeing you again soon um, because I am working regularly now, sometimes I work as late as 4 o'clock. So on those days, I'll try to post it in the Discord when I have to work later than 3 o'clock. So that you'll know if we're going to be starting at 3 or 4 or 4.30 or whatever. So that's, that's, yeah. All right, God bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you.